y'all don't mind, let's go back to a time we really used to have church. We used to have a good time, praising the Lord, the Spirit and the truth. I love the old church. That old brother. Family, family, it's time to pray. And I'm going to look at Colossians chapter 3 on today. I want to offer you a brief devotional word, a thought that's relevant for our time. And then we're going to go to God in prayer. In Colossians chapter 3, verses 1, 2, and 3. Therefore, if you have been raised up with Christ, keep seeking the things that are above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on the things above, not on things that are on the earth. For you have died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. That's a beautiful text and it reminds us of some really powerful truths as Paul encourages us to look up. Some things in the human condition make you long for heaven more intensely than others. The atrocities of mindless evil, murder, seemingly unslowed retaliation while in the context of a life debilitating pandemic that is literally unseen. It, it's certainly among the things that make us long for the next life or, or at minimum, at least the next season. But we're called right now and living right now in this space, in this place, in this time and in this season. And God has called us to live. We are called to take our place in a context of hurt just like our Lord came into this world in a context of brokenness. Our calling is to live and respond to the brokenness around us by manifesting truth and living and loving individuals in high definition. We're called to remind our entire country at this point that there is a better way. Paul is encouraging every one of us to learn the principles of looking up. Number one, look up to the person of God. That's what the text says in verse number one. Seek those things which are above, where Christ is seated, where God is. Our goal is to look up to the person of God, number one, and, 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 and knowing that a life lived to please God must be the central and grounding paradigm of every real follower. The only way we can capture the, the heart and imagination of our world that's entrenched in the sickness of racism and the fear of the unknown, COVID-19, will be by believers realizing that living for God, who is bigger than the entire world, is the only way for you and I to capture the moment. It's still true that, that God is not shocked by 2020. So our goal is to live to please God. But then not only that, look up to the perspective of God. We, we, we say all the time, God's got to be up to something. And that's right. A second imperative in this text is that you and I have to remember that God is omni. He's omniscient, omnipresent, omnipowerful, omnibenevolent. He's omni. But one of the dynamics of God having all power and, and all knowledge and being everywhere at the same time, watch this, in every time is an understanding that there's no way for me to quite wrap my mind around all of what God is getting out of this season. But I do need to remember that he's up to something. There's some kind of glory, some kind of benefit for what we're going through and all of what the world is dealing with. So I live knowing that God's perspective about what's happening is higher than mine. Can't you hear Isaiah? Isaiah 55 and verse number eight, especially out of the common English. My plans are not your plans. My ways are not your ways. I acknowledge the fact that God, your perspective is higher than mine. And even though I cannot see all of what you're getting out of this, all of what you're getting out of me in this, I, I trust that your perspective is the higher. I look to you to please you. But number two, I look to you to trust your perspective. But then let me give you number three. Look up to the practices of God. While we're here, while we're in this present moment, we represent heaven. We're seated with God, with Jesus, with God in the heavenly places. And so what that means is I've turned my life over to God's purposes. I give him the comprehensive rule of my life. He has jurisdiction over how I feel. He has jurisdiction over how I process. He has jurisdiction over everything that goes on. So I'm living in a way where my mind and my heart is given over to him. 
I look to God for my practices. And one of the ways that we go through what we go through is by recognizing that all of my life is supposed to be under the, 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 the direction of Jesus. Can't you hear Matthew chapter 28, verse number 18? All power in heaven and in earth has been given to me, Jesus talking. Go therefore and make disciples of every nation. Teach them, baptize them, and then teach them to observe everything I've commanded you. And lo, I'm with you always, even until the end of the age. And one of the things that the Spirit of God teaches through the apostles of Christ that all followers of Jesus ought to practice is a very simple notion. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. You and I are called in such a way where, where we live the better way. We live a life that responds to the sin-sick, entrenched programming of our world, not to fall in suit with it, but to live in a way where we overcome the evil by being good, by doing good, by living out a way that honors the one who has, who has the better perspective. The one who seated and we trust and we live to bring back a sense of love and respect. The one who genuinely understands more than we understand and the one who we honor with our very life. Look up, look up and live in a way that says this is a better way to do this thing called humanity. Let's pray to God right now. Father, we love you. We thank you and we bless you for being our God. We pray even right now, Lord God, in the season that we're in, that you bless our world, heal our world, strengthen our world, and help us, Father God, to live in a way where we bring you glory. We ask, oh God, that as we navigate through the wickedness of the enemy and through the fear of the unknown, that you do that we do so in a way that brings you honor and brings you glory. We pray that you help us, Father to look up, to see you, to see the person of God. We pray that you help us to look up and understand that your perspective is far more superior than ours. We pray that you help us to look up, to honor the practices that you want us to practice. We want, Lord God, not to fall in line and be victimized by not only the philosophies of Satan who has created a sense of racism and evil, moving people to hurt other people and then perpetually doing more hurt as a result of their rage. We want to respond by living in a way where we are not overcome by evil, but we overcome evil with good. And so, God, we pray that you help us to practice love, to practice trust, to practice faith, to, tra to practice being kind, to practice seeing humanity as you have designed us to see humanity and seeing ourselves as having value and purpose and mission and a desire, Lord God, to live for you. We ask, oh God, that you continue to reach out and heal and strengthen and be with those who are walking the streets right now with fear and concern. Be with our essential workers. Be with our government. Be with the policemen. Be with the, 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 the police women. Be with those that are making decisions. Be with every single individual, Lord God, as we live to have a heart for you. We pray that you turn back the evil, turn back the wickedness, and allow your name and your power and your truth to rise up in the hearts of everyone who would call on you. We pray that that you allow us to stand under your banner of King Jesus and live in a way, Lord God, where we represent you in every season and live right now. Help us to live for you right now. Help us, Lord God, to seize the moment. We pray that you don't allow the enemy to continue to wreck and ravage the hearts of those who are simply born with more melanin. We pray that you answer racism through the power of King Jesus and through the power of perspective and through the power of paradigms that are created by your word, not by the wickedness and fuel of uh, uh, frailty of human thinking. We love you. We honor you. We bless you. And we praise you. Get glory in this moment. Help us to live for you. Help us to honor you. Help us to respond in the season in a way where we can continue to bring you glory. In Jesus' name, we ask all of this as we together say, amen. Listen, this is an opportunity for us to respond to our context by living, living for God as we look up, look up to his person, look up to his perspective and look up to practice doing what God would have us to do. And remember this practice. Don't be overcome by evil, overcome evil with good. I'm going to pray for you and I'm asking you, please pray for me and let's watch our God change everything around us. God bless you and God keep you.
joy divine. Hey, hey, hey. 